Hello all and welcome to this lecture on the Mohr-Penrose pseudo inverse. This is a commonly used technique in machine learning and it is super useful in order to solve for unknowns for a given equation in the system of linear algebra. And before we understand that what is a Mohr-Penrose pseudo inverse and how does it work, I would like to give you a super quick highlight on the topic of matrix inverse. So in the topic of matrix inverse, we had studied that it is the idea of calculating the inverse of a matrix and it holds a property of when a matrix is multiplied by its inverse, it will result to an identity matrix. This is an efficient way of solving for unknowns in a given linear equation. And most importantly, it can be calculated only for a matrix which is square and not singular. And of course, we had also discussed that how actually behind a regression problem matrix inverse if it can be calculated then it is super useful in order to solve for unknowns which is also called weights in the field of machine learning so i am not going to repeat the entire thing within this lecture because that will increase the length of this video a lot but i want you to focus here where we studied that the inverse of a matrix can be calculated only if the matrix is a square matrix which means the number of rows should be equals to the number of columns. however that's not quite practical in the field of machine learning because in most of the projects where you will be working you will see that there will be thousands and thousands of records which means the number of rows will be too much However, the number of features will be limited. Maybe you will be working with 10, 20 or let's say 50 features. However, mostly the number of records or the number of rows will be in hundreds or in thousands or maybe even more than that. In that case, this matrix X, which is representing the number of features and number of records in our machine learning use case, will most likely be a non-square matrix that will have a different number of rows and columns. Then of course you won't be able to calculate the inverse for this matrix and this is exactly where the Moore-Penrose pseudo inverse comes into the picture. So the Moore-Penrose pseudo inverse for a matrix A is denoted as a superscript plus and it can be broken down into these three components if you have been following the lectures on eigen decomposition and singular value decomposition then you must be already familiar with these elements but still i will give you a very quick breakdown let's say that we have a matrix a which has m number of rows and n number of columns in that case matrix u will be made up of the left singular vectors which means it will have a size of m by m corresponding to the number of rows in matrix a and then d will be a diagonal matrix of size m by n that will contain the eigenvalues diagonally in descending order and v transpose will be an n by n matrix which is also called as a right singular vector representing to the number of columns in the matrix a and by the way the d plus that we have here as the second element it is nothing but the inverse for this matrix d so all we need to do is calculate the reciprocal of all the diagonal elements within this matrix d and we will get our d plus matrix and after decomposing the matrix a into these three elements once we are able to acquire the moore penrose pseudo inverse then this will be as efficient as the inverse of a matrix in order to solve for unknown in a given linear equation that's pretty much it for the theory part now let's quickly jump on to the jupyter notebook to have some coding demonstration so this is the same matrix A that we have used in the previous lecture and I'm using the singular value decomposition function within the NumPy library that we have used earlier in order to calculate these three elements. So as I said earlier, U is the left singular vector, each vector corresponding to the rows of the matrix A. V transpose is the matrix composed of the right singular vectors corresponding to the columns of the matrix A and D is the eigenvalues for our matrix. So in order to calculate D plus, as I said earlier, we need to invert the non-zero values of D, which is located diagonally on the matrix. Although you don't need to do anything manually, you can simply use this NumPy function, which will create the diagonal matrix for you. And then this following function will calculate the D inverse for you. So this is the inverse for this diagonal matrix on the top. And since D is a two by two matrix here, and this is why in order to make it compatible for this multiplication, we are increasing the dimension or the size of this D plus matrix by adding one column to this diagonal matrix. And we finally get this as an output. And now we have pretty much everything in order to calculate the Moore-Penrose pseudo inverse. 
so we have the u transpose we have d plus and we also have v transpose and yes i am applying another transpose over it and the reason is that when we are using this singular value decomposition function then the third element which comes out is already transposed and by the formula of the more penrose pseudo inverse we need to take the transpose of this transpose and this is the reason that i have applied this additional transpose here and this output that we can see it is actually the more penrose pseudo inverse for our original matrix a although it was not a square matrix and this is why we were not able to calculate the matrix inverse but now you can see that how it is possible to calculate the more penrose pseudo inverse which is going to replace the matrix inverse in order to help the machine learning model to solve for unknowns in a given linear equation and by the way one last thing that i want to show you that you really don't need to do all these calculation in order to calculate the more penrose pseudo inverse i showed you all this just to make you gain an intuitive understanding nothing else however you can calculate the more penrose pseudo inverse by simply writing this one line of code and this will give you the same output here that we got here on the top by doing a lengthy calculation and as i have been saying throughout this playlist that the agenda is just to understand different different concepts of mathematics be it in vector or matrix or eigen decomposition however you won't be asked anywhere to do all these calculations manually because it is super easy for our computers to calculate all these complex equations by simply writing one line of code and that is it for today's lecture i hope that you found it useful if yes then please consider dropping a like below subscribe to the channel to support our work and going further within this playlist soon i am going to upload a super intuitive lecture on principal component analysis thank you very much for your time today see you in the next lecture